open the door, you got to make sure you push the button. Okay. Turn the handle down the bottom. Okay, standby. And there's um, your OEISP button. So we'll, oh, right there. We'll okay, and that's that what it'll be in production. It's labeled just like that, correct? Yep. Okay. Just like that. I'm just going to wash a couple things up here. So I have no, a flow that I do in the you airplane. Just, you're the expert at it, not me. So I'll, I'll start down here, basically. Test bench power's off. we got rudder boost on. That's normal. Those are normal. I just work my way up the pedestal. Trim, trim, trim. trim. This is down. That's the deployment, the manual deployment of the mast. That's up, so we got oxygen. Okay. So working way up, uh, throttles are already forward. We start in that uh, position. And so that all looks good. That's off, and then that's all normal. And then just test the mast. So these just pull down and work okay. down tight. The ones we have. Yep. And then right side, uh, breakers are all in over here. Static source is normal. Mic's normal. All these switches here, we're just looking to make sure in the right position. Bleeds are where they should be. Those are all good. Lights are off. Lights are all off. Anti-ice uh, anti is off. Engine anti-ice anti should be on. And, uh, on. Normal. Yep. It's on. And avionics and master's see. off. It's off. And all your breakers on the fuel panel on the left should be in. Yep. I checked all these. Okay. At that point, you can bring the battery master on. It's the furthest switch to the left under the under the gang bar. Okay. There you go. On the left. There you go. Okay. And then we'll check the. Uh, make sure the lights are all still good. All right. All the way across these the top are good. and down here. These are all good. Those are all lit. Yep. Yeah, those. Got him. And the door light is out. Is so off. Okay. Just clear the. Wash in the morning. Right. Just wash it up here. And we have a uh, engine lockout system on this, so you have to put a code into that code panel to your left there. I've already done all that. I've already done all that. And I'm going to put uh, your weight information. So Autoland right, uses the weight the that you put in here. Good. All right. And our fuel load is what we have out there, uh, 2,100, 2,200 pounds? Yes. We'll just call it 2,200 pounds. And we've got passengers close enough for what we're doing. Okay. Uh, this is the EIS, the the uh, or the um, auto throttle mode enunciator right here. That little mm. rectangle, so you'll see that as okay. we go on. So at this point, we're ready to start. Uh, right. Why don't you go beacon on? Okay, get the beacon so on. Top, left, or top right. Beacon's on. And then uh, you're going to punch in the code over there, right by your left elbow. Oh, here. Six. Okay. I'll just tell it to you. Okay. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Two. Pause system okay. test, okay. okay. Yep. Enter. And we'll wait for a beep beep. Yep. And uh, ready to start the right side. That's really clever. So, okay. bottom left, you got your start. You're going to go up on the right side. We'll do this number two engine. Correct? Uh, right, yeah. the right one. The right one's on number two. Yep. Clear? And then you're going to give it okay. uh, at about 14, 15%. You're going to give it fuel. Pressure's good, fuel floor's normal. Temperature's coming up. About 50% you're going to release the starter switch. Okay. There's 50%. Just put it to the middle. Ready? Ready? Yes, you get that set. So that's going to the gents. And we'll let the governor come up, or let it come up to the governor. switch over to the right. This one up. So here's your uh, meter, so go ahead and turn it on. Up and then release. Up to reset. There you go. It's on. Once it's below 50%, we're good to start the other one. But check and make sure we didn't blow the current limiter. So just push that one in there and make sure you got voltage. Good to go. Left uh, side. Okay, ready? Ready. Okay, so engine start left. Switch turns to the middle switch. position. This one? Okay, 
The size, the relative size and positioning of the buildings is is uh, very close to representative. See that right there. It's pretty impressive. Go ahead and put your flaps to approach. Okay. Flaps to approach. Now we've done first part of the day, um, so go ahead and bring your props just to feather for a couple seconds. Ready, one at a time. Both or would you together. like to do both? Just build them together. We're just checking the manual feather. Okay. Good. And that worked. And then, how do you want this set? Do you want this up higher? This will keep us air conditioned. Uh, Just having, one. Having the high idle here, yeah, that's the right okay. side, uh, so it looks good. That battery charge is normal. You may get a master caution on the takeoff roll. That's totally normal. I'll call it out for you. All right. Uh, and then, uh, before we go, your batteries are going down. Just to let you know on this guy. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to do. I'm just going to uh, check your. Uh, Leads and pneumatics Leaders. here, real quick. So we got it on. We're going to go off. We still have pneumatics off. We should get a master warning. We do. Master we warning. Cancel that. Bleed air. Got it. Back on. We get it on the right side and bleeds are back on. Okay, that's set. I'm going right. to test your pressurization yeah, system cleared. for you, real quick. Make sure that's working. We got high idle here. We got bleeds on. So we're just looking for a descent rate okay. on the cabin climb, which it is. That's a good test. And I'll set your pressurization controller. That's set. That's all on. Okay. And then for your V speeds, I'll, actually, I'm just going to set that for you. Our V speeds? I just you use the defaults? Uh, no, for this condition, we're going to be 94 and 106 since we're taking okay. off the approach. Okay, 94 and 106. And those are set. So they're on. Okay. Yeah, you see them there. Go ahead and run your altitude selector up. We'll try 5,500 feet or so. Okay. Get 5,500. Oh, 5,500. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it with a radio in the background. 5,500. There we go. And then you can press your toga button now if you want. Okay. So our toga button's here, right? Yep. To get that set. And you see the uh, disconnect switches up here? Yeah, let me try, let me play around with those. And then let me show you. Is anybody waiting on us back there? Are we good to be here for a minute? No, I don't see anybody. Let me show you the flight plan page that uh, Will was talking about. So if I go to flight plan, there's your normal uh, flight plan page. If I go to the fourth page over. I'm just going to just going to come down here for. Okay, just turn it down, down if you want. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. So you see, you got climb targets there. This is the default climb profile. So 100. So that's where you'd set them if you want to change it. Okay. And if you want to change it to a pilot defined, you go select pilot defined, and now it gives you an option to change it here. So. And when you want to go back, you can go back to the system defined. Yeah, so we'll do the system defined for All right. the takeoff. And then this is where you're talking about the crew schedule. Yeah, so you go normal. normal or, or max here. All right. And then here is where you set, here's where you really want to run your ITT. And then it treats it like a limitation. So mm -hmm. if you put it down at 760, it's not going to let the system get over 760 on the ITT. So we usually run it, ours about 790. All right. And same thing for the descent the schedule. you got the pilot defined, or you can go with the default. Of 250 and Mach 0.5, Great. three degree descent. And then uh, let me show you one more thing real sure. quick. Sure, I'll show you anything you want. So, uh, do you have 1360s in your 206, or are they 1347s? Or you only have one. So, is it 1347 or 1360? Do you know? No, I'm trying to figure out which one we have. Does it have the Bluetooth? It doesn't have Bluetooth. Okay, no, so it's only a 1347. Yes. So we've added on the 1360, you know, you make all your selections here. Yes. Uh, we've added, if you just tap the button, it brings up an MFD page, and you can show all of the adjustments in real time. Come on the right. So for passenger, pilot, and then for the intercom, you're probably familiar with the GTN. Yes. you got the GTN style right, page. Exactly. So if I toggle off, say, by the way, turn your speaker off if you would. Uh, if off. I toggle, say, passenger off, 
side. Correct. You get the real time. Uh, and then that just isolates them. Yeah. A little more situational awareness with these panels because you can get kind of buried in the. That's the 60s. Nice. 1360s. 1360s. Yeah. So this is part of that 7.3 software upgrade. All right. Let me yeah, and on the the CJ we have the old ones. So that's interesting. So we have this. So then to see. So the other options here, are the other options that you would normally have? Yeah, most of that will look familiar to, those, to you. Yeah, yeah synthetic V, those things that stayed the same, so it has... Now we've got an altitude set. Go ahead and uh, arm your auto throttle by pushing that button up there. Okay, and the auto throttle right there, bingo. Yep. We've already done, uh, this isn't the first flight of day, so the governor checks are all done. We don't need to do any of that. Uh, okay, and we still have this one high idle and one low idle. Yep, which uh, it's okay for takeoff, but we'll pull it back. Okay. Um, Wash you up here on the checklist. Go ahead and switch your auto ignitions on. That's right, just to the left of the column up there. Yeah, ready. You got to pull them out and up. Yeah, on, on both are armed. Watch that wing right there. Yeah, that's serious. I'm gonna move this guy. You're clear on this end. Thank you. Okay, we're past the last taxi. I'm gonna switch over to tower. We're on tower. Appleton Tower, Dakota 8239, Victor, 4,000. Auto ignition. Once we uh, get ready to roll, we'll turn the anti ice off. We'll leave it on for now. Auto feather, if you go ahead and arm that if it's not already. Okay, auto throttle. Trying to remember where it is on this one. Bottom left. It looks like it's armed already. It is armed. Yeah, we did it, I think, earlier. All right. We're going to skip the ice protection stuff. Uh, we'll get them uh, after Tate or uh, before we uh, get them. And you want these here, correct? Or do you want to move them up to high uh, you idle? Can, you can pull this down ready? to low idle. Yeah. yeah. Right there's fine. Right there? Yep, just both at the at the outside of the gate. Yeah, right there, there is fine. Okay. There's no requirement for these to be in any between high and low idle. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. ADIs come up. Appreciate your help, thank you. Bravo Victor Bravo runway three. And you can do rolling, you can release the brakes, that's fine. Okay, and right around a thousand. Yep. Okay. There it's engaged. I feel engaged. Out of the fouls are engaged. You got it. We're yeah. rolling. Airspeed's alive. Okay. Let's get back on the center line. 80 knots. Rotate. There we go. Okay, positive rate gear up. Okay, brakes on. Gear up. Lights, landing lights off. To your left. All right, let me just make sure the gear comes up. I was holding this until I see it cleared. Landing lights are off. Yaw damper on. Okay, yaw damper will be on. Got yeah, amper engaged. Okay, we're waiting for 400 feet, which you are, it's 400 feet, flaps up. Flaps up again, ready? Yep. It flaps up. Flaps okay. coming up. Switch that selector to FMS mode, and you can FMS press... FMS mode? Yep, press felch. A little right. change right next to it. Felch, it's engaged. And then probably heading mode if you want it. Okay, great. Heading. And then autopilot if you want, or you can have flight. You're I'll have flight for a little bit. It's going to do auto land, I've got to at least do auto take, uh, manual takeoff. <laughs> And take us uh, about 30 degrees left, if you would. Because he said to head back to the northwest anyway, right? You got it. So somewhere around there. And then you can slowly pull your props back. Okay. Depending on how fast you pull them back, you may go into the transient. It'll turn amber, but that's normal. What do you like to fly at? 1,800 is a good uh, number. Nice and quiet. Yeah. We had a little bit of a wobbly nose wheel. It's got a little bit of a low spot on it if you can't feel it. Yeah, felt it starting to slow down now. Alright, continue to climb up to 5500 and you can see it's in AT climb mode because you got FMS selected. So it's got the torque at the right below 2200. Yeah, yeah, it brings it right up there and, and it matches them, right? And you can see above your airspeed tape, you got the uh, reference selected there. Alright, gears up, flaps up, lights are off. Let me just wash you up on the checklist here. That's going to go. And we are pressurizing. Uh, 
Uh, after takeoff is complete. 759, Fox Trot, Juliet Tower, runway 30, fly the runway heading clear for takeoff. I'm sorry, fly heading 360. So that's passing. So we've got the um, heading set. Okay, there's out to capture. So now we're in capture. The speed comes off for the filch. So now it's going to run you out to your, I think we have normal cruise selected. Yeah, high speed, right? There we go. AT Max Cruise is what's selected. So if we go to that flight plan page now, so it's basically going to run, run you out to that Max Cruise speed. So if I go to the this page here and select Normal Power Cruise, you'll see that this will change. To Which radar center. do you have in it? The 75? 75, yeah. Unfortunately, the radar just quit working the last couple of flights, so we got to get it replaced. I have the Garmin tech support number. Yeah, yeah I'd appreciate that when we get back. <laughs> Is it under warranty? <laughs> it better be. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and put it in manual mode on the FMS speed selector. Okay, I'm coming up here, yep. manual. And then roll that speed knob. All right. Yep, roll that back to like 180, 160, something. So just so you can see a big power change. Is approved whenever you can make it. No, no later than departure. If you can do it for me. Okay, we're rolling our runway. You see the throttle's coming back, and they're targeting one knot per second. Two three November, you can tune that right hand turn down to the southwest. Two three November, thank you, sir. Nine Fox Chart Juliet, connect Green Bay departure. We'll see ya. Roger, Nine Fox Chart. Hold on, thanks. Yes, the center is currently 268. Looks like some weather ahead of us. If I go through the RNAs, uh, I'd like to I see the airport. Would like Still to decelerating. Uh, 5443, up entire runway 30, line up and wait. 30, line up and wait. Wow, is that nice, especially in busy terminal areas? Yeah, it's great. Like Scott said, you know, we have a 352, so we jump in the 350 to fly it. It doesn't have this yet, so, you know, you find yourself thinking that your auto throttle's engaged or something. Okay, All right, there's your uh, speed reference, so the throttles are going to come back up as you decelerate to 180, and it'll just hold that 180. So it doesn't have VNAV, correct? Or does it have VNAV? It does, it does have VNAV, it just doesn't have the... Uh, oh, it does have VNAV, yeah. It, it, you just can't select uh, the complex... Uh, sorry, it doesn't have the, the CCD VNAV. So it won't do speed constraints. Right. It'll do complex altitude constraints, you know, at, at or below, at or above. Um, and that was added for this certification. We call it Enhanced Descent Only VNAV. Which you didn't have in the other version of the NXI? We just had regular VNAV. Oh, so it wouldn't do, it yeah, it wouldn't do so the now, complex now constraints before. You have, before. A, you have the complex constraints here, right? You can do at, at or below, at or above. Um, so you, you do have some more control over your altitude. You just don't have the airspeed. Yeah. Will it do the approaches per the SIDS? It can't, do, it can't do the airspeed, but it will it'll do, do the altitude. Yeah, okay. do the altitude. So at least it will follow the VNAV for its hits and starts. Okay. So I would recommend that you do like maybe turn to the west for just a little bit okay. and then Ready? we'll kind of work our way to the left. I see the ESP uh, limits. Yep. And here, that's uh, those lines. You go ahead and walk your speed back to, let's do 160. So you can see a smaller reference change here. Hold short 301, Echo Bravo. Spent a lot of time getting these to play nicely together, the both engines, right? When it, especially like when the power levers go all the way back to idle, you get flat pitch, and those can be a little bit asymmetric sometimes on the King Air. Plus, you, then you have to, of course, monitor all the information from the EIS. Right. So that's really smooth. That's a smooth reduction. Yeah, it's, we're, we're proud of it. So let's go ahead and get set up for OEI ESP. Okay. Speed's good for that. You're going to disconnect the uh, auto throttle when you're ready. All right. So disconnect either. Either, Either one, switch, yeah, right? Yep. Let's just do the one on the right. Okay. Moral enunciation, which is nice. Let's bring your right power lever up to max torque. Okay. So the right one up Number to max two. torque. Would you like that to be right at 22? 
Yeah, you want to get as pretty much as high as you can because okay. to, to get rudder boost to activate, you really have to have high power on the on the operating engine. That's good. How's that? Now pull the left one back to idle. Okay, ready? And do it quickly. Okay, we're going to have to trick it a little bit. So I'll, I'll take the throttle lever. Okay, there it goes. There it goes. Now let's left pull this one out. back just a little bit. And now we're in OEISP. It's latched on. It doesn't require rudder boost to stay active. So you can bring that left power lever up a little bit if you want. Match them. And we'll stay in. Yeah, so you can pull the right one back. Put it at something comfortable to keep us about, you know, 160 knots or so. Which one, the right one? Yeah, just match them up. So now we're in trim, right, for the most part. Okay, so now what I'd like you to see, so you see what the tick marks did there? They got narrower. Yeah. Came back to the limits of 10 degrees. You got it. So go ahead and roll into that left and go past it. So you'll feel the force yep, gradient. Yeah, the force up. coming and you Keep can actually going. see it. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Go, you want to get out there to max. So you, oh, yeah. Force is stronger and stronger. Yeah, so the further you go, the stronger it gets. And hold it there. We want auto uh, level to engage. When it does, just let go. Let go? Ready? When it, when it says auto level. Okay. We'll get the oil. Yep. Oh. Let go? Yep. So there's level mode. That's a strong force. But, but you can still power through it. That's the idea. Yeah, but when you hold it there, if you're holding it there beyond those limits, you got to be totally out to lunch. Now, we don't want to stay here in level mode, otherwise auto land's going to activate automatically. Correct. Right? So right. now you change your mode. Right. If you want to heading us back around the other direction, it'd be 180 degree turn, it'd be perfect. Now, it's still in level mode, but I've touched something, so shouldn't level mode come out of that, or it doesn't? Well, you're still in level, level mode, vertical but mode, but right? level vertical, exactly. level lateral. So you have a lateral mode selected heading, but your vertical mode's still level, so you can do altitude hold or whatever you want to. But you're right, the auto land timer yeah. will reset. Right, because that's reset because oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I've touched a button. Yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't explain it clear Sorry. enough. No, that's good. That was my error. Misunderstood you. No, yeah, I, no, I didn't say anything. I didn't say the correct thing. So then that's how we get the level mode. So the auto land is canceled because I've touched one of the, other than the GMA, I've touched one of the Garmin right. buttons. It knows you're awake. You got it. We'll see ya. So when I did that, so when we did that single engine simulation, when I brought the power back, it still said that for a while. Is that because it, the, yes, the boost? Yes, because it latches on, right? It's not rotor boost. The rotor boost turns it on initially, but when it turns on, it stays latched on. We don't want it to be coming in and out with rudder boost coming on and off. Or, so once it's on, it's on. And then that's what this button is for. So once you get, it's really meant for. So I think you can disconnect the autopilot right now. It'll still be on because he hasn't disabled it yet. Yeah, right? Go ahead and disconnect the autopilot. Okay. Oh, maybe that does reset it. Oh, it did it. reset it, yeah. So normally what the way it would work is uh, the pilot would, it's really to protect during that transient phase, right? The engine's failing. They're dealing with a checklist. They're distracted. They're supposed to disconnect the autopilot as part of the autopilot procedure, right, with an engine failure. Correct. So then you have that ESP to keep it from do, you know, getting stupid while your head's down in the checklist. Once that's all done, then you just toggle it off here. You can also just engage the autopilot and that toggle it off, but you can toggle it off manually here. Uh, and that was required for the So can we go through just a real quick one of that again? Please do. Okay. Let's say that we have the autopilot on, right? Uh, yeah, yep. So we've got an autopilot set, and then we lose one of these engines. Yeah, do that. Just in cruise here, okay? Yeah. The left one, let's Do say. the same thing. Uh, okay. Pull the left side all the way back to idle, right side up to max torque. Okay. Because I've lost the engine, then I would disconnect the autopilot right away anyway, correct? Yeah, so it's, yeah. So let's just say, I mean, yeah. I try to be real careful with planes, especially not mine. Oh, no. That's much appreciated. Okay. Now, you're so not going to see out. this until you disconnect the autopilot. So let's just say, okay, boom, I just lost my engine. Right. Disconnect the autopilot, right? There you go. Left engine. So now EISP is active. All right. And it doesn't matter at this point what you do with your throttles. That's going to stay active until you either engage the autopilot or you toggle that button off. So right now, and I'm turning into the good engine, right? Yep. So now, interesting, the differential, the good engine lets me to go up to the ESP limit as if I had, well, because that engine's operating. It comes operative. in a little bit. I think it goes from 45 40, to 40. But, pretty, but, pretty but the left one, that's smart, because you look at the number of King Air accidents 
that I've seen people lose a left engine and, and then make a left pattern into land. Yep. Right? So this, because when you go past that, you can feel it. And the farther you go, it's pretty hard. It's hard to ignore. Anybody ignore that? Okay. So now I'm going to, phew, I've recovered that. So now I bring the engines back, this one back. Yep. Bring the left one up. So now let's say you've been through the checklist, and at the end of the checklist it says toggle OEI ESP off. So just okay. reach down there and push the button. And sorry, you were in ESP when that happened. That was okay. kind of bad timing. That's okay. So now it's back and it clears it. Yep. You got it. And you're in level mode, so you can yeah pick the mode you want. Right, and then engage it autopilot, and I've been heading. Yep. It's got that, and I come back here and hit that. Since I've had that interaction, pass that ESP, then I, nothing happens with the auto land. Right. Now I didn't go past. ESP very long anyway, so auto land wouldn't have gauged because I wouldn't have hit that limit. Um, if if auto level engages, then if you do nothing, auto land will engage. Tell you what, once you make a 90 degree left turn, let's get out just a little bit further from Appleton when we push the button here. Okay. We'll go just a few miles to the north, and then we'll turn basically right. towards. What is that about? I don't know. Southeast. Did you want to go? Do you, hey, Aaron, to the northwest again. Uh, just go north. That's that's a pretty good heading right there. If you right want to there. stop right there. Okay, yeah. here you go. I just want to get a little further away from Appleton when we do the that's auto fine. land. Let's let's uh, descend down to 3,000. If you're okay with that. That's fine. Are you tell me. That keeps us a little bit more predictable for the uh, routing for the auto land. That's perfect. 3,500, just so we get a little bit of a descent. You want 3,500, sir? Yeah. Okay, 3,500. Thirty-five hundred, it is, sir. We got our auto throttles engaged. This is a manual. Uh, auto right now. Not oh, right no. oh, excuse me, it's not, isn't it? Because yeah. I haven't clicked on it, yeah. so I have to. Either is the yaw damper, either because auto level mode won't engage the yaw damper. Right, disconnects. It yep. disconnects. You can engage your auto throttle if you want. Okay, if you want to point us to the south southeast, that would be just uh, southeast. Right. It is. And we'll slow Here's down the, the speed. Charlie Airspace, we got to stay out of there, but you should be just fine. There, slow it down there even a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, you put us back to about 150 if you would. Just sure, to happy give, to. To give them some space. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to call him in just a minute. Are you ready to do an auto land sequence? Sure. Uh, straight ahead, all the way down. Uh, we got to get the brats. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> We're all pilots. <laughs> uh, you can try the FBO. You can make the right turn at Papa. All right, I'm going to get a tower call. Perfect. Tower grommet test 1-4 is uh, 20 miles north. Is now a good time to uh, do an auto land demo? Garmin test 1-4, yeah, I think we could try it. So let's uh, give me a call 10 miles north. Yep, then I'll tell you there's 299 or 6. Call you 10 miles north, 299 or 6, thanks. Okay, if you would turn right uh, about uh, right, ooh, 50 degrees. Uh, 250? Uh, sorry, just to the south. 180. Okay. Keep you out of that Charlie's airspace. Oh, yeah, we'll do that. Sure, absolutely. We're getting ready to switch up the runways here. So let's enter right traffic for runway 21, and I will call your base. That's nice. You're going to do 21. Okay, when you are ready, lift the cover, firmly and press the, uh, the auto land button. Ready? Yep. Now the volumes are going to increase. We'll we'll adjust them back down. All the way down to the end with me. Bravo with you to the end to Victor Alpha. Whoa! Yep. <laughs> that's to that's to get the pilot's attention. So go ahead and move that bottom knob, yep, radio, and then intercom. You got it. There you check, go. Check check. Check check. check. All right. Check. Okay. Keep an eye on this guy. Let's go to uh, map HSI layout inset map. We need to tell him when we're 10 miles north of Appleton. Okay. So it's figuring out where it's going to go right now, and now it's figured it out. You see that? So and it's increased to 200 knots. Yep. It's going to increase. And that's what I would have normally on this side. Yep. That's okay. correct. All right. Okay, let's keep an eye on that traffic, and I gotta call them 10 miles they're, north. Yeah, they're 34. What's the best way? There it is. Appleton, North America, okay. 157, Delta Charlie's about seven west inbound landing. 
157 Delta Charlie, Alcatara Retro, report uh, 5 West. We're in the process of switching the runway. 16.5 miles. So when we get to 10, we'll call it. Okay. And then this shows me the waypoint. Uh, give me a call 5 West. I'll see if yeah, I can you wouldn't see any of this. This is just okay. for demo purposes. This is what the passengers would see. Same thing here on that side. But basically, this is what it started. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, it's Here's building its own uh, flight approach plan. through there and flight plan. Yep. That's very cool. So that's the EA waypoint. So those miles remaining are not correct by three miles? You're talking about that? Versus the one up top? Yeah, those are estimated based on your position, altitude, and the course that it wants you to fly. To turn um, the anti-ice vanes on automatically, you can go ahead and put those switches to the on position. There we go. Does that automatically. This is incredible. And then when does the movie Airplane show up? <laughs> We're working on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no action required. So, and North America 7 Delta so of course, we have this turned off and the 77 turned off. But then this would go ahead and it'd be. Right Passengers could put a headset on. They could talk to ATC just by putting this push in this button. Oh, this would be a transmit button there for them. Yep. Talk. They have to press and hold it? Yep. So it shows them the, the weather, and then they, would they just activate that? that uh, That's talk just or if they, they, they want to talk to ATC, we give the passengers a way to do it easily. All right, yeah. I need to call him. Go ahead, go for it, yeah. Garmin test 1-4, 10 miles north inbound. Garmin test 1-4, Roger, report 5 mile final for runway 2-1. Call you five mile final runway two one Garmin test one. And then look at this T Gray. This is basically the flight plan. Okay, we're, flaps are getting ready to deploy. When that. we get down to one ninety or so, you'll see the flaps go to approach. Okay. And we've got our first waypoint coming up two miles. Then we do in an arc, which represents that. Okay, there's your approach flaps. You go ahead and match the position one notch down. Okay. Bring it to the right and down. There you go, right point there. Uniform, now it's slowing us down to 160. Runways, uh, two, one, three, in two, here, one, that's our flight. It says caution. Don't, yeah, don't worry about any of that. That's Again, that's just for our purposes. This, right. is what, oh, yeah. this is what you want. So they're showing our flight plan in through here. Shows a hold if we needed okay, to, to lose altitude. Yeah, Correct. Is yep. that what that would be? That's altitude right. or airspeed or alignment with the course. Yep. Yeah, the airspeed's closed down to 160. Got some 182 alpha wow. Right alpha hold short of runway it inhibits miles. TAWS. Uh, let's go for, uh, we've got some 182 alpha. Now it's slowing down to 103. Alpha short of runway two okay, and just as a, a landing alpha. briefing, yes. for whatever Charlie, reason we have to uh, abort this, I'll take control down. and do the abort. Uh, right, okay. absolutely. Come up on a four mile one, two, three, green, no red, gears down. Now we ma match, match it, correct? Switch. You got it. Charlie, we're we're matching that? the switch. So it's slowing down to 103. Gives us, of course, this is a test system. Caution. Shows There's full flaps. Full flaps. Ready? So you just came down. Okay, full Carbon flaps. Test four, five mile final. Seatbelts on. Two, one. Uh, clear to land. Traffic will be a regional jet departing runway three zero prior to arrival. Clear to land, 2-1, copy the traffic, armor test 1-4. That's amazing. Good roll down, please. Okay, we'll just toggle that off, so that's not Just so you don't yet. see it. So, yeah, it's all that stuff, I'll just clear this. You see how it's one. slowing to 103 on the ref? Yes. As a missed approach point, would it ever go around? Nope. Auto land will no, not go around. Three zero, clear for takeoff. That was thirty-seven sixty. All right, the gear is down. Four, three, eight, that, uh, We're clear to land. You can bring the landing light uh, switches on. Two okay. one, please. Landing lights are on. Runway two one, four four three eight. Wow. Air seven Delta Charlie, you're following that King Air. Traffic. That shows it's active. Uh, on a three mile final for runway two one. Let me know when you get them. So it's going to touch down. Oh, just look, let it do its thing. It'll break. If it looks like it's going to stop at the intersection, we'll have to stop it ourselves uh, and either go through the intersection or, be, or break harder. Stay with you. So we'll just have to watch that. There's that traffic departing. Bravo now cross runway three zero. Cross three zero. Bravo spar four three eight. So can you imagine doing this on an instrument check ride? You'd pass. <laughs>
Yeah, even partial panel. 60 kind of green meter parts we'll see. Exactly. <laughs> So that's my partial panel picture. <laughs> Charlie Roger, runway uh, 21, number 2. Clear to land, just be advised that... Uh, it's for the DPE that gets scared. Operation, so he'll be full stopped on the runway uh, just for a short period there, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get you figured out. Okay. I'll uh, extend a little further. Then. Thank you, sir. Wow. Appreciate that. Camera still recording. Thank you. 4438 is clear. 3 on Bravo. Request taxi to Appleton Flight. Thank you so much for I know this is experimental, but I will ask you one question. At, uh, you the EAL brake fail, is that normal? Well, yeah, that's normal. We'll, we'll tell you about that. And that'll set, it's a better option for you for the ramp. Check, check, check. Bravo, okay, pop the ramp. 4, 4, 3, Can't hear myself. Thank wow. You. Okay. Purely for engineering purposes, we have the modes that are armed, flare and align. So, Radar altimeter here, when that gets to 45 feet, you'll see these start coming back to idle. Jeez. Because VREF is predicated at 50 feet above the threshold. Smart. We are clear to land, the gear's down. Fifty-five, fifty, forty-five. Okay, throttles are coming back. You see them? Yep, throttles coming back. I can hear it. It's starting to flare a little it's bit. It's flaring and it's aligning. Lining Dipping itself away. Because it got a little bit of crosswind. Okay, just like that. That's how it's done. And now moderate braking, all the way to a stop. As soon as it it's stops doing it. and lurches yeah, forward, it. when it lurches forward, disconnect the autopilot and then you have controls. Oh, it just knows we want to get lunch. <laughs> It knows we want to turn left on Alpha. Oh, it does. <laughs> yeah, at the end it can get a little bit. Yeah, because it's point, slower speed. So now it's done. Disconnect. Autopilot disconnected. Yep. yep. Oh, why? Oh, Can't it auto taxi? Yeah, let's get that disconnected. Okay, there you go. We'll pull up. Carbon test one four. You want to stop at Alpha? Carbon test one four. Alpha would be beautiful. Uh, left turn at Alpha. Right turn at Bravo and cross from a three zero. Left turn Alpha. Right turn Bravo. Cross three zero. Appreciate it. Thanks. Carbon test one four. Thanks, guys. 7 Delta Charlie, runway 21, now clear to land. Okay. Get us off and hook a right turn here and cross 30, and then we'll clean up the airplane. Wow. I'm sorry, which way wants to go? I wasn't. Right turn. Right here. turn, yeah. right? Okay. And we're going to cross the runway. Does he have anybody waiting on us? Do we have anybody? Okay, I come here to the center line. I got to do as well as the auto land. Center That's lines right. are for professionals. Yes. Yeah. And we are clear to cross. That is amazing. Okay. I'm going to get your flaps. That's a flap handle. Okay. Flap That's handle up. Power for I'm going to bring this Our engine and ties is on. Departure holding short. We'll go strokes, right, uh, three cogs, uh, landing uh, lights, which one any ice you got uh, already, yep. auto short, feather can come off. Ready. Carbon test 1-4, 129-0. Uh, nope, uh, it's going to be on, uh, they're not actually manning that today. Uh, Carbon test 1-4, you can take... Uh, Bravo down to the end if you like with me. Okay, Bravo down to the end with you, Garmin Test 1-4. Up from Tower, this is a Cirrus 2255 Tango holding short of uh, 30 on November 4. Cirrus uh, 2255 Tango hold short of runway 30. It's a beautiful design. How'd you like it? Only problem is if you should be, uh, should be able to put in the FBO. A line up at wait at Juliet, <laughs> runway two one. Maybe you'll see that in the future. Exactly. I'm going to turn your oxygen four, off. Bravo and hold short of two one up Bravo. Did you turn it off? Five. I did. I just did. Yeah, you can turn your standby battery off there on the panel by the OEI or by the prop sync button. Yeah. Uh, Victor, 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 Victor,
Swift takeoff, runway 214. The fewer things you have to pilot, change your attention better. Two five five tango tower, runway three zero. Line up and wait. Okay, let me get. Line up and wait. Yeah, three zero. Two two five five tango. I'm gonna come up here and hold short here. Four seven Delta Charlie Bravo five cross runway two one over to Juliet. Cross two one at uh, Bravo five to Juliet uh, Delta Charlie. Oops, it looks like Doc's coming out. Uh, hang tight there. Okay, that's a good good plan. I'll hold short. Yeah, Tower, thank you for noticing. Doc's on our way. We got a time to get into Oshkosh if we could. Runway 21, one able. All right, Doc 72, Tower, runway 21 at Juliet. Line up and wait. Line up and wait, 21, Doc 72, awesome. Carver test 14, left on Papa. Doc test 14, yes, left at Papa and uh, uh, into parking. Left on Papa into parking, Carver test 14, appreciate it. Good morning, Tower Woods Project 14, clear for visual. From nice the landing. Zero. Nicely done. Thank you. I worked hard at that one. <laughs> I, I had to listen to the expert and push the button. Tango, Alpha Tower, runway 30, fly the runway heading clip takeoff. Runway heading clip takeoff, 2255. Yeah, if you ever forget how to land, you can just do a one round of auto land and be like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yep, we're coming back now. Four convicted. Yeah, unfortunately, you have to fill out a big report, and they'd probably get you in all kinds of trouble. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you don't get the option to engage all the other stuff. I was telling T Gray the first time I used Autoland was in a DC-10 at Continental at the simulator in LAX. My dad worked for Continental, and I was in my 20s and just your, uh, just had my instrument reader. Hey, yes, sir. You're clear over here. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to stay over here to the left of this, especially with these guys. And it was impressive there, and that was in the late 70s. To have it in these planes is a game changer for safety. KB 30 seconds, Doc 72. And the auto brake, the braking was perfect. Do you want to go back to the same spot? Well, usually they have a follow me guy, but I don't see him. Oh, there's so. a, hold on, there he is. I see him coming. Okay. Let's see where he wants. 55 Tango, contact Marine Beta Parks, we'll see ya. 55 Tango, good day, thank you. No, he's going somewhere else, I guess. I don't huh? know what he's doing. Yeah, you why, don't you, why don't you hold here? He's trying to figure it out. Because there's a track turning okay. our way over there. Turn it around. There. Four Flip it around to the right. Two one wins at one five zero at nine at Clear Land. Clear Land two one four Oracle Victor. Thanks guys, appreciate that. No problem. Yeah, if you stop on that left, that right brake, it'll turn tight. Yeah. At least, all, you know, at least it was for a bomber, you know? You got it. Try to be careful with tires. I try to be careful around line guys. Or I could take anybody behind us. We're going to go over to flight center. I'm sorry, who was that? Uh, for Uncle Victor here landing on 2 1. We're going to the flight center. If you got anybody behind us, we'd like to roll, but otherwise, we'll clear. 8,000 feet in front of you. Use it all if you'd like. All right, okay. brake on, sir. <laughs> Parking brake is on, sir. Nav light off. off. Yeah. Nav light's off. Avionics master off. Avionics master is. New batteries on this just because they're all red. Okay, and I'm trying to remember. Yeah, oh, that's right here. It's okay, and then that's all. No.